Hello there, and welcome to the opener. Today I'm going to be looking at a party game, Werewolves. Now, Werewolf is a bluffing game full of different roles. You can be a werewolf, you can be a not a werewolf. There are things you can be, it's a role-based game. And it's similar in some regards to The Resistance, or my particular favourite version of The Resistance, The Resistance Avalon. Ooh, why is the Resistance Avalon better than the Resistance? Because it's got bloody Merlin in it! If you want to know more about that, I highly recommend watching a game of me and the other chaps from Shut Up and Sit Down playing Avalon, because it features some of the best lying I have ever done in my life. Avalon is great if you've got less than eight people, but if you've got more than eight people, it gets a bit slow. It doesn't really work. There's people around the room who... You, the bad guys can't communicate as easily, and it, it just, it's not bad, but this is better. And why is Werewolf better? Well, there's two reasons for that. One, it's got werewolves in it. Two, you get to kill and eat your friends. This is not the time nor the place to talk of such things. And I'm not wearing the right sort of hello again. Werewolves is a game of drama, to be blunt. This is why I've got candles. You'll need candles. It's a game of staying up till the early hours of the morning, eating your friends and lying to your friends. How does it work? Well, each person in Werewolf will get given a card at the start of the game, which means one person doesn't get to play. One person has to be the moderator. That might not sound like a lot of fun, but it is. Everyone gets given a card, and they keep this card secretly in front of themselves. And then they have a little pick. And you're either a villager or a werewolf. If you're a villager, it's your job to find those werewolves, to hunt them out, and to kill them. Because every day, the villagers will get a chance to pick one person who they think is a werewolf, and they get the chance to lynch that person, to hang them, or cut off their arms and legs, or do other horrible things to them. Maybe you'll actually go, you know, pitchfork crazy with flaming brands. But the problem is, the villagers get to vote every day, but the werewolves do too, because you don't know who the werewolves are. And every night, the werewolves, wherever they may be, will awaken. Now, Ultimate Werewolves as a package is kind of crazy in the fact that you can play it with 5 to 68 players, which is crazy. And that's why it also comes with a flipping notepad. So if you do want to play with a group of maybe, maybe 68 players, you can do so. And you can note who's who on a big chart. I mean, personally, I think it sounds crazy, but you can do this. But what's nice about Ultimate Werewolves is you've got options. You've got these massive decks of cards that have all sorts of different characters. Now lots of these aren't just straight up villagers and werewolves, but you can also be vampires who kill people every night, but the people don't actually die until the following day, making it even harder to work out who's who. And there's all sorts of fancy roles. On a basic level, it's simple. Every night the villagers get to hang someone before they go to bed, and then every morning they wake up to find that the werewolves have awoken and eaten someone new. But you've also got people like the seer. Now the seer. Now the variety of stuff in Ultimate Werewolf at first is frankly mind-boggling. You've got stuff like the lone wolf, who's a special kind of werewolf who can only win the game if they're the only werewolf to survive, which lends for some lovely werewolf backstabbing. You've got the ghost, who whoever dies on the first night becomes a ghost, who can then write a single letter on a piece of paper every day in the hope of spelling out a word or a clue that might help the humans guess who the werewolves are. A little word to the wise though, don't play with a pineapple on the table because people will keep just putting the letter P down as a major clue. So whoever's near the pineapple is a werewolf. It's unlikely to ever happen to you, but you know, I don't want anyone to make that mistake again. Every type of role, whether good or bad, comes with a very simple points system, which means you can keep playing games, you can keep altering the roles slightly. I've played earlier versions of Werewolf, and to be honest, some of it feels a bit imbalanced. It feels like adding characters has a major impact. Whereas this, if you just want to add a bit of spice, you can find something that doesn't really change the game too much, 
just to add a bit of variety. You are a capable and repulsive liar. I have never killed Now, a lot of people think that the Resistance is a better game than Werewolves because people can't die. And I think if you're playing in a smaller group, that's important. But what's nice about werewolves is if you've got 10 to 12 people, at first you've got too many people, you can't read the whole room, but as the werewolves start to pick people off, these players have to remain silent for the rest of the game. If you get hung, if you get lynched by your friends, you're not allowed to talk for the rest of the game. That sounds like a massively irritating thing, it sounds like a negative point for the game, but it really works, providing that you're focused on the game. It means you have these wonderful moments right at the end where you've kept quiet for 10 minutes knowing full well what's going on because you don't have to close your eyes at night if you're dead, you can watch. And when you can finally discuss the game and explain to people the mistakes they were making, it's just incredible. People erupt. Every game of Werewolf ends with an eruption of conversation and everyone wants to play another game. Um, and I couldn't gesture because the bench would squeak. How did he want you to? <laughs> he pointed at him and I went, and you... That's not really yeah. yeah. oh, So you put I'm up a stern oh. defence No, I couldn't I gesticulate because the bench would creak. Uh, You've got to watch out he's... Werewolves is about drama. You need candles. You need a mixture of friends. People who don't know each other too well, perhaps. Mixed groups are always better. It means you can't tell who's lying. As easily. If you play with people you know really well, it's not going to be the same. You want to have that edge of genuine fear and distrust. You need to listen to the soundtrack for Bram Stoker's Dracula. You need to have food to keep people going. It's the sort of game where if not everybody in the room is playing it, it doesn't work. Werewolf is a game of magic, but you need to transfix people. If you've got people talking in the corner, it's broken. When people close their eyes and the werewolves awaken, they will be genuinely frightened that they're going to die in the night. And they'll be genuinely looking around at other people, wondering if one of those people is going to string them up or eat them when they're asleep. And that is amazing. Ultimate Werewolves might just be the ultimate party game, but as I say, you've got to keep people enchanted. If people go off for something any longer than a quick toilet break, you're going to lose people. You can't have people jumping in and out. You can't have people wandering around. You've got to keep the room focused. And to do that, you've got to make sure you've got food that everyone can eat. But I mean, you know, if you've got 10 people around, you can't feed 10 people. Who's got 10 plates in their house? We're not made of ceramics. You need to make something that everyone can just nibble at. Something that you can have a big pot of that people can eat with rice or with a tortilla wrap or with nachos or just spoon out of a mug into their mouth. And that's why this opener might just be the most important one. I'm going to show you how to make chili con carne burritos. Chili con carne, con carne. Yes, but to do that, we're going to need to go back in time by about four hours. Get a big pan, put it on some heat. Bit of oil, because we're using really lean meat. I'm gonna put the meat in in bits, so it doesn't kind of steam. If you put all the meat in at once, then it doesn't really brown properly. When the beef is brown, turn the heat right down. Whack in approximately a big onion. Cover it up, and then let the onion soften for about three or four minutes. Once you've softened the onions up and they start to look like baby ghosts, you can add the other stuff. Three garlic things chopped up, a tin of chopped tomatoes, half a beef stock cube in a mug, one red pepper, two teaspoons of paprika, 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 a teaspoon of marjoram, mar marjoram, which is really hard to find. You can use oregano if you can't find it, because he's a bastard. Two teaspoons of ground cumin, two teaspoons of hot chili powder, oh, ha, ha, ha. a reasonable squeeze, about that much, that's about, I don't know, that much of tomato paste. Kidney beans from the tin. And then last but not least, we're gonna add two things in. First of all, chocolate. You wanna use some chocolate, just some sugar brings out the flavor of tomatoes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. 
So you want to use not a lot of chocolate, about a, th a thumb's worth of chocolate, just a little bit to go in. I've already put the chocolate in, so I'm not going to put any more in, but you really want to go for dark stuff. The darker the better, you know. Really stuff with a really grim backstory, you know. Things happen to this chocolate. Bad things. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm not really sure about because I've never done it before, and it might be a really bad idea, but I'm going to put some coffee in. Not a lot of coffee. Oh, it's quite a lot of coffee. And um, this is espresso, so this might have been a really bad idea. But we'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, God. And then once that is all well mixing together, eat some chocolate, finish off the coffee, and come back after this has been simmering for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Screw it, just leave it. Forget about it. And now you've got some fairly stonking chili con carne. And the wonderful thing about this is you can keep it cooking pretty much on a very low heat for a very long time, which means if people arrive later on, you can basically just say, hey, have some food, whatever. People can eat whenever they want. Hey, bit of great cheese, a healthy thunk of natural yogurt, and then just, you know, if you've got some, a bit of lettuce, which will just sort of hold it together nicely, or possibly make it impossible to fold. Oh God, what have I done? But um, usually, if you get tortillas that don't break, the good thing about this is it means that people can just make themselves a burrito and nobody gets fussy about plates because people will happily reuse plates because they're not really using the plates. Hooray! Less washing up! Except I've got to wash this up because this is a bloody mess. It's going to be good though. Hmm. Hmm. So that's the end of the opener and Werewolves is a fantastic opener but it's a game that's made by you not the rules so get it right invite the right people around and for god's sake get some candles <laughs>